Hello, I'm going to go over how to run the MCDNA model in R using the GDNA package. I'll briefly describe what the model is, but mainly I'll be going over the R code and the output produced. So the MCDNA model, or the multiple choice DNA model, was first developed by Delator in 2009. You can think of it as an extension to the DNA model, which is a binary model or what it what it does is it dichotomizes multiple choice responses into correct or incorrect. And a correct response could would require possession or mastery of a set number of attributes. However, some of the distractors could also, selection of some other distractors could also require or provide information on uh, a smaller number of attributes. And the multiple choice DNA model, what it'll do is it'll try to tap into that information. So let me jump right in. First, I will generate a random data set, 15 items with four options and a sample size of 1,000 examinees. Now, it's not always uh, it, providing, um, you can think of it as a, it's a bad example just to use a randomly generate data set, but the purpose is just to review the R code produced. So now that I ran it, I will also name it. I'll name each one the columns. And let's open it up just to look at it. So one to four, meaning four options. So you can think of it A, B, C, D. D would be uh, number four. And there are 15 items for each one. And that's just my response data set. Next, I'll run the Q matrix. Now it's an extended Q matrix. So before each row in the Q matrix was designated to a specific item and each column represented the attributes. Now you have to, for each item, you have to include the actual options as well. And let me run right now the Q matrix that I produced. So let me go all the way down and I named each column here. Let's run it. Let's view it too. So, so for each item uh, in the first column, you have to have a specific option for each one. And the next set of columns are the ones and zeros for the attributes, whether this specific option for this item requires this attribute. So as you can tell, option one for item one requires A1 and A2. A key thing here with the Q matrix is that to run the model using the GDNA package, uh, you should only include the cognitively coded items or options. So for example here, so there are four options for item one. However, option four doesn't require any attributes possessed. So this this pretty much the GG in the package doesn't like this. So this is the reason why I hashed it out. So it's not part of the final Q matrix. It's not included. That's why it's greened out here. But I just wanted to show it or just to remind everyone something that you have to do. So now that you have your data set and your Q matrix, let's load the GDNA package. And right here is the, the package that you use to run GDNA. The function is MC model, and it's actually very quite simple. It'll run the Delatory 2009 MC DNA model. Um, and all you need is the data set and the Q matrix, and it's pretty straightforward. And let's run it. And as you can see, the model converged. So let's look at the fit statistics produced. And all you have to do is, is uh, test fit. Let's run. And, you know, here it will provide the relative fit indices. Now, more interestingly, are, uh, is the next thing um, that you could run is the selection probability parameters. 
for each of the latent groups. Now, the information here, let's scroll up all the way to item one. So, so you can think of this right here as for each one, or you can think of it by go over by column right here. Now, the selection probability parameter is the probability of selecting a specific option given that you have the knowledge state or the, uh, or basically here the knowledge states are classified into latent groups. So all the knowledge states or all the different combinations of the three attributes in the model that have, have the first two attributes would be classified into uh, this latent group. And so if you have a knowledge state classified into this latent group, here's the probability of selecting option one of item one. There's a probability to select option two, three, and four. All of each one of these probabilities uh, for this latent groups add up to one. And you can see here that the highest probability is 0.62. So 62 uh, percent uh, selection probability for this one right here. Now, mainly if like I had a, uh, a real a better example, uh, what you would want is always the option that requires the attributes possessed to have the highest selection probability. But this is, this is what the, uh, basically the MCDNA model does. Now here's the expected number of examinees in each of these latent groups. This is uh, mainly if you're if you're interested uh, in so for each one of the uh, the the actual latent groups, the actual number of examinees uh, classified in each one of these items and categories. Now, finally, is the actual classification using the maximum likelihood estimation. So basically, here is for each examinee, I, for the first 10 examinees, I want to know the classification based on this model. And here, after I ran it, I can see for examinee 1, he possesses none of the three attributes. For examinee 4, he possesses A1 only. So if you had like a real ex uh, example, you can use this to sort of uh, diagnose each person or classify each, each person or develop a profile for each examinee. Now, uh, I'm now, now one of the things regarding latent groups, you can um, just to uh, just to go over it again, the latent group is a group of all the knowledge dates or possible combinations of the attributes. Like one combination is one, 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 like possessing all attributes A1, A2, and A3. Another one is A, like, so there's, for three attributes, there's eight possible combinations. Now, one of the assumptions or limitations with the uh, uh, multiple choice DINA model is that each one of the knowledge states can only be classified into one latent group, meaning that if you have a distinct, uh, basically if you have this uh, attributes or options that require the distinct attributes, they uh, require an additional option is required uh, to possess um, there, there, needs to, there needs to be some option um, that re requires all those distinct attributes or taps all the other options. So let's go over option 15 right here. So for um, not item 15, I'm sorry, uh, there are four options for item 15. Now you can see 
Option one requires 101A1 one, and A3. Option two requires just A1, and option three requires just A3. Um, option four doesn't require anything, and that's why it's hashed out. So, so, but what if, uh, so basically, if you had a, a reason or, or if you didn't want, or if you couldn't include, uh, let's say, this, this option one right here, like you just took it out and you just made it zero, zero. The, the issue here is that an examinee who has both one, zero, and one, or the knowledge state 101, it can either be classified in, in any one of these, any, any one of these, or this one right here. So there's no, you know, basically how is 101 classified or which latent group does it fall under? Um, which, uh, which cognitively coded option does it fall under? Um, and if you try and run it, let's say, let's run this Q matrix the way it is right here. And now let's run the model. It's going to basically fail because it's using the Delaware Tour 2009 um, implementation to run the model. Now they did uh, include some sort of correction. You can enter the specific keyed responses. Um, so they basically updated the model. But if you were just interested in running the 2009 version, uh, which, you know, you can find the paper on that. Um, that That's one of the assumptions that you shouldn't violate. Meaning, um, and just again, just to try and explain it better, is each of the, each distinct attribute, or each option that requires a distinct attribute, meaning um, this one, um, let, let's just to take this one out, just, just to make it simple. Uh, so option two requires A1, and option three requires A3. Now these are two, um, each option requires distinct attributes. Now you need an additional option that requires both those attributes. So the knowledge state that has both those attributes knows where to go. Um, and, and that's one of the, the key things to use this model. Um, or, however, uh, well, overall, it's a, it's, a, it's a powerful model that you can use and you're, you can pull in additional diagnostic information from specific options selected. However, you do need larger sample sizes because now you're increasing the number of parameters estimated by the model. For example, the DINA model uh, for each item, all the, all the item parameters, a total count of item parameters produced, it's pretty much uh, two parameters per item. However, it's much larger for the MCD model. And uh, we can actually look at the um, number of parameters produced by the model uh, under test fit. It actually told us the number of parameters which is overall, it, this is also including the knowledge state parameters as well. Uh, we, altogether, it was uh, item uh, parameters plus knowledge state parameters of 187. Um, the number of item parameters are dependent on the number of items and also the number of commonly coded options. So you, you have to take this into consideration if you plan on using the model, like do you have an appropriate uh, sample size to use it? Uh, but if you do, it, it can provide uh, good results. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. And take care.